You know what amazes me about you? Well, it could be anything. I'm a pretty amazing guy. You turn the keys to your bar over to the guy who's asleep on your pool table. And then you jump in your car and you drive me to hell and gone and you don't even know where we're going. Richard Linkletter is one of those writer directors who's not afraid uh, to use words in a very visual medium. Uh, this is a man for whom dialogue is extremely important. He also makes these films that leisurely play off and before you know it, you've been hit in the heart. They are human stories mostly that Richard Linkletter likes to tell. And now he has one of his best in Last Flag Flying, which became the opening night film on Thursday night at the New York Film Festival and will open in theaters in early November. This is the man who gave us Boyhood, a true masterpiece by any measure. Also the Before Sunset trilogy of films in which two characters simply walk around and talk, talk about their relationship, life, so many things. Well, sort of Last Flag Flying is a perfect companion to that kind of film here. It's based on the 2005 book by Daryl Ponixon, who uh, wrote The Last Detail, which was turned into a film in 1973 starring Jack Nicholson, Randy Quaid, and the late Otis Young. That was about three non-commissioned uh, Navy people on their way to a naval prison to deliver someone who go off on a road trip on the way that is truly unforgettable. Well, Ponixon wrote The Last Flag Flying kind of as a sequel to that story. This is about three former Vietnam vets who gathered together to accompany the son of one of them who has died in Iraq to his final resting place. Am I willing to surrender to God? What the hell happened to Mueller the Mauler? First class drinker, gambler. I see we have some visitors amongst us here today. We were in the service together with your pastor. But it really isn't a sequel. It's gone in the film version at least in different directions and it's set now in 2003, right after the Iraq invasion and the discovery of Saddam Hussein post 9-11. But the three who are doing the talking are played by Steve Carell, he plays Doc, Lawrence Fishburne, who plays a uh, now a preacher by the name of Richard, and Sal, played by Brian Cranston. He now owns a bar and he's probably the most gregarious of this trio. Anyway, they are all brought together in the film's opening scenes on a mission, as it were, to deliver the son who has been killed in Iraq, the son of Doc, uh, Carell's son. Carell is deeply underplaying this role and it's very moving to see what he does. Now the military wants the son buried at Arlington Cemetery, a great place, a resting place for many war heroes. But Doc doesn't want that and is torn at the prospect there, so is at odds with the military and their desires here. So with his friends, he takes the coffin on their own, gets a rental truck, and goes on their way to uh, his home in New Hampshire for a final resting place. This is the journey that they take. That's what this movie is about as they talk about not only the war they fought in together, Vietnam, but what happened in Iraq and where the world has come since that time. I thought we were going to a funeral. We are going to a funeral. Just looks like it's gonna take a little longer to get there. What you gonna do, strap the coffin to the roof of your car? We could do that. It is a lot of dialogue. In fact, I thought watching this movie, it could actually be a play on stage. It unfolds like that. But it is also very cinematic in that it's an intimate experience for the viewer. It doesn't pound you on the head. It doesn't try to dazzle you in any way, except with the elegant grace of its performances and the wonderful writing here, uh, delivered by Linkletter and Ponixon. And Linkletter is a director is very much a slave to making that dialogue shine on screen. As are these actors, all of them superb. This is an ensemble. I can't even separate one from the other in terms of who gives the greatest performance here. This is a true ensemble acting. Carell is terrific again, and more in his fox catcher mode here, far away from the comic actor and presence that we know. Cranston is just wonderful. He's, uh, he's not Archie Bunker at all, but he's just as gregarious and outspoken. Uh, he's the life of the party, as it were here, a driving force to keep this road trip going. And then there is the reluctant character played by Fishburne, who's talked into this by his wife, that he should join his old buddies and do this thing, do this for 
Doc. And uh, the three of them are wonderful. Joined eventually by a young Marine named Jay Quinton Johnson. That's the actor who plays him. And he becomes a little fourth peg in this wheel as it goes along. But it really is the uh, work of these three fine actors in a movie that will ultimately touch you deeply. There's something quiet, unassuming, and very personal about the journey that Richard Linkletter is delivering in Last Flag Flying. And I say, whenever you get the chance, go.